Vulture. If I would go away, you'd miss me. You're like a vulture hanging over, like, you like a bad so cold. Well, you know, God. I almost want to say coronavirus, but I won't go there with oh, that one. No, no, we'll leave that one alone. That's not nice. Anyway, Damon is um, one of my longer Facebook friends. And I got to tell you, there's only a few. Well, I shouldn't say that. There are a number of people. I'll be very charitable. I really want to say only a few. Few people that there's their opinion. They have, really have something to say on Facebook that I actually respect. But Dame is more than that. You know, he's uh, he's in Spartanburg, South Carolina. He's the author of three books, and he's an adjunct adjunct professor of history at the Citadel and Charleston Southern University in Charleston, South Carolina. He also hosts on the UT two. The American, I like this one, the American storyteller. You know, uh, I'm almost breathless on that, you know, going through all the things. Damon, are you there? Yes, I am. All right. I've already introduced you. We've given you all your props and all of that. But, you know, the main thing, Damon, you're on the ground in South Carolina. You are a native South Carolina, Carolinian. You have the pulse of the community down there. I asked you a question on Facebook um, a couple of weeks ago, and you, you gave me a very, very pointed response. The question was about Joe Biden, South Carolina, the African-American vote, and you were just blunt about it. You wasted no, no space on that when you said he's got the black vote in South Carolina. Okay, today is the big day in South Carolina. Your take, your read on the ground, knowing the kind of the sensitivities and the mood in the community, particularly among many African-American voters. Not all. I mean, you know, we're not a monolith. I mean, you know, believe it or not. Yeah, I mean, you ain't gonna vote like that. No, 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 you know, I mean, you know, <laughs> some of us are something, some of us are something else. Uh -huh. But Damon, your take on that, where black uh, black voters are at in general in South Carolina at this point. Okay, first of all, uh, can you hear me all right? Yeah, we got you. Okay, good. Well, I voted early, and over the past several days, the... Uh, the early voters in South Carolina have been tremendous. I mean, I was number 427 in line Tuesday. So a lot of my friends, uh, both black and white, are voting, especially today. It's going to be an amazing turnout. Mm. Now, as to how that's going to work out, this is how I see it. Now, as for Bernie Sanders, he has the support primarily of the young and the college-educated and intellectual segment within the black community of South Carolina, by and large. And however, though, I do think that that's mostly a fraction thereof. There are a couple of black leaders who are supporting him, including uh, Representative Wendell Gilliard and um, former city councilman Quadro Campbell. There are a few that are supporting him. But again, those are for mostly, I think, the uh, progressive college-educated youth, for the most part, have spoken to him. The vast majority, I would say, are going for Biden, with some exceptions. There are some I know who are in the LBGTQ community who are going for uh, Buttigieg for obvious reasons, but that's pretty much a minority by and large. But the vast majority are for Biden. Uh, as you probably know, our senior dean of black politicians here in South Carolina, Representative James Clyburn, comes from James Clyburn, he came out and endorsed Biden. And the vast majority of people who I actually see at the polls are older voters who are more than likely, who by and large, are going for Joe Biden. Okay? Now, having said that, there are considerable pockets of black Trump supporters. Mm -hmm. But I think the worry about this whole uh, operation that Rush Limbaugh is trying to do and the getting the Republicans to vote for Joe for a Bernie Sanders and the idea that this will blunt uh, the support that the Democrats are going to get in September, I think that very relatively few are going to actually do that because I think the turnout is going to be so large that if the likely chance that Biden is likely to get it, it would come primarily on the legitimate strength of the black vote and the older Democratic white supporters who are going to go for him. Now, Damon, let's move ahead. Let's let's make a what if. Joe Biden actually does win South Carolina, and he wins it convincingly, and he gets a tremendous boost from the African, in general, African-American voters in the state. Okay, we got Super Tuesday coming up on uh, Tuesday, and you've got, what, three, four, five other southern states with, in fact, a just like South Carolina, 
a major portion of the Democratic base in those states, African American. What would this mean for Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders going forward? And also, if Bernie doesn't do that well among African Americans in South Carolina and going forth in the other states, will this, number one, will this be a huge rocket launch, put Joe basically really back in the hunt? And secondly, um, what would that mean for Bernie? Because He's got so much momentum going now. Many people are almost conceding the nomination to him. I think it's a bit premature, but nonetheless, thinking that he's got it. So your take on all of this going forward. Okay. Well, first of all, I think that you're going to see a mass drop off after Super Tuesday because uh, Amy Cope, you know, this is embarrassing. I can't even pronounce her last name. Can you help me on that? Klobuchar. 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 Yeah, Klobuchar. Thank you very much. Kovachar and Pete Buttigieg and the rest of them, their support is relatively confined to small segments of white intellectuals, as far as I can see. And that's kind of like across the board, by and large. Again, you know, with Pete Buttigieg among the black LGBTQ community, he's got his, some support among that, and there are a few who are outside of that realm that are supporting him, but I really see the vast majority of them dropping out after Super Tuesday, and it'll largely be between, I think, personally, between Elizabeth Warren and uh, and Bernie Sanders as well as Joe Biden. I think it's going to be a three-person race up until the primaries following Super Tuesday. Hmm. Well, I would also add to, uh, Damon, one other, the hidden factor, the X factor, Bloomberg. Now, Bloomberg, he's intriguing for another reason. Um, we already know that he's independently financing his own campaign. We also know he's got a lot of money. But it's not just money. I have to remind people, Tony, as we were talking about before, people forget the man is a seasoned politician. He didn't run a city, and he keeps saying that. And he's right. New York for 12 years without learning something about politics. So having said that, money, seasoned po political guy, uh, can influence a lot of things. One possibility, Damon, your thought on this, if in fact Biden does stumble a bit at some point, and then you've got, and I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not really sure about Warren. I, I really see it as at this point, Bernie and Biden. But a Bloomberg coming in and Biden stumbles, could there be a wedge, an opening for a guy like Bloomberg? Personally, I don't see that within the black community because. As to me, I see a replete with, a repeat with Bloomberg, sort of what you saw with your uh, homegirl, Cla home oh, oh, Kamala yeah. Harris, in that, you know, a lot of people are turned off by the whole stop and frisk thing in his record mm -hmm. and the whole thing with the Central Park Five and all of that. A lot of African Americans are really turning, tuning out on Bloomberg, and of course, he didn't get into this whole thing to get delegates to begin with late in the first place. So I personally do not see him as a real factor as far as all of this is concerned. Uh, now, there are a considerable number of African Americans, I think, who also go, are going for Elizabeth Warren. You can't sell her short on this, especially among uh, young, young, intellectual, college-educated black women. They're starting to go for her, I've noticed, and... I think that you, she will have considerable support among black women going into this. So I wouldn't exactly count her out yet. But I will tell you, though, that out, speaking from right now, my state is showing me proud. They have been consistently in large numbers taking advantage of our early voting system here in South Carolina. The voting places are packed. Their Facebook pages full of all of that. So I have no doubt that as today goes on, it will do well. But... The one problem in South Carolina, however, is this. A lot of precincts, including mine, have switched their po traditional polling places. And the only reason that I know that has happened within my community is because I tend to keep up with these things. But a lot of people today are going to go to the polls and find that they have been moved to a dis different district without really warning if they don't pay a whole attention, a lot of attention to the news or uh, check SouthCarolinaVotes.org, which is where we often go for political information. That is the more serious and politically savvy of us. So I think that's the one thing that's going to throw perhaps a monkey wrench into all of this. But other than that, I think things are going to turn out well today.
All right, well, Damon, you know what? Um, we really appreciate you taking the time with us on the Hutchinson Report, giving us really your take on the scene. You know what, Damon, because we talked to so many of the talking heads and the experts, but they're not there, not really with the pulse of the community. You are. We'll be coming back to you, Damon. We got, what, six, seven months, God, you know, to play around with this, and it's serious business. It's not a play thing. And we're going to be talking again with you and many of our other commentators and just getting the take from time to time. So stay tuned and stay with us on this. You'll be back. Can I say one more thing very quickly? Go right. Go right ahead. Okay. Yeah. If any of the candidates are listening to us, please do us a favor and stop using Mother Emanuel as a prop. We don't like it. We don't appreciate it. It's one thing if you want to do town halls here and all of that, but please, do not use this as a prop. It is sacred to us. The scars are still there. Leave that alone. All right. You got that. Woo. All right. Thanks again, uh, David. Shout out to Spartan David Ford from South Carolina. Thanks again for joining us. All right. All right. So, Tony, we do have, what, about?